Referee Rich Mitchell about to get this one underway. Three five-minute rounds if they need them in the Cage Warriors middleweight division. Mitchell Good in the grey, Angus Shewitt in the black. Good is going to have to possibly weather a storm of, of massive strikes. We've seen how powerful. Oh, huge shots from Angus Hewitt. Really opening up on Mitchell early. I mean, we've seen the power and the ferocity of that striking, and this is kind of where Mitchell wants to be. He needs to get into a position where he can slow Angus down a little bit and take a little bit of energy out. I mean, the, the, the plan will be to take this later into the fight, maybe into the second round, and then look to take the back. And, and that really is the game plan. But Hewitt has so much power, and he's so aggressive with it early. Wrist control here, possible sweep attempt, beautifully done. Now watch the back take attempt here. Hewitt gets to the feet, into a takedown of his own. I mean, we could see something crazy like a, a jump to a triangle. Corner calling for trips from this position, from Hewitt. Yeah, you, you can already see that you know the length of Mitchell's legs. Yeah, so they've got triangle written all over them, and Hewitt at six feet tall, probably not used to giving up four inches in in height and a bit of reach to guys in this weight division. Yeah, and it, and if Hewitt if Hewitt gets back to a similar position, because he looks like he's trying to drag Mitchell to the ground, if he gets that position and the hands separate, that's an almost perfect position to set up a triangle from there. Now he's got a little bit further behind. This is a better position for him and. Good needs to, 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 to do something in order to get out of this, this underhook control position. Or do you just wait a little bit and, and let Hewitt get that energy out? Well, it was a fast start from Angus Hewitt, but he's not been able to get any big shots off since. Let's see what he tries to do here, whether he's going to try and disengage. First warning from referee Rich Mitchell there. A little bit more action. And again, Hewitt drags his man to the floor. And he looks like he's going for a buggy choke here. I mean, this is crazy. Those long legs, are, this could be the first buggy choke I've seen him. Okay, he lets it off there. A buggy choke for those who don't know, I mean, beautiful reversal off of the fence into side control. Buggy choke for those who don't know is a submission off of your back. Where you reach underneath the leg and lock off. Guillotine here, and with those long arms, expect to possibly see him switch to an anaconda if he can get his hips in front. He's cranking on the guillotine, but not a great position to do so. Oh man, I want to see him back underneath side control. It was interesting, as soon as he ended up underneath side control, we didn't immediately try the regain guard, which made me think we could possibly see a buggy choke. It's something that we, we've seen a few times in MMA, not yet seen in Cage Warriors, I don't believe. But it's certainly uh, the fashionable thing at the moment, it seems. And the way that Hewitt is attacking the takedown, he's pulling backwards from here. It's a good takedown to end up in side control. Nice love to cut there from Mitchell. And, he, and Mitchell has to be careful about getting into a slugfest with Hewitt. We know he's happy to take one to give one. Nice knee to the body there from Mitchell. Guillotine attempt here. Too much elevation to secure the position. 45 seconds left in this round. Triangle possibly coming here. You can see the wrist control. Those legs are going to be long legs to try and get out in order to throw that throw the leg over the shoulder though it's the problem with the triangle position easier the lock easy the lock off hard to get there to begin with you know if, if your foot's trapped in a in a half guard or butterfly guard position slicing elbows there from Hewitt he's still working the inside he's trying to get that right foot out I mean Hewitt's not really reacting to this wrist control and the only reason I think that might be the case is because he knows that good isn't going to be able to get that foot out and, and the triangle is not going to be much of a threat
Final seconds of the round. Oh, couple of nice right hands there. Fun first round there. And just decided not to lock off on the other hand now. I'm not sure why. No touch of gloves. Straight down to business here. Round two. Angus Hewitt. Mitchell Good. And Hewitt looking much more tired. I mean, we've seen how much power he has when he's tired still. In both the matches that we, you know, his last two fights, he had this comfort behind victory after he was looking, you know, pretty much out of it. So it's still dangerous throughout. Yeah, I mean, he'd take, taken some uh, some huge shots against Tom Mullum. Uh, but Connor Hayes, rather, do you beg your pardon. And he, I think he pretty much had a broken nose in that fight as well. Yeah. He, he was breathing through his mouth, losing a lot of blood, but and incredible tenacity to come back, and uh, he's going to need it here. Another sweep Mitchell. here. Sorry, good tries to get to the back position, and just isn't quite able to make the transition back onto his back now. Hewitt's corner calling for the elbows. He's just taking stock here, though. And I think we're going to see uh, Mitchell try and use, yeah, there it is. I was just about to say this underhook to try and wrestle up possibly from here. Or as more of a jiu-jitsu guy, we could see a, a half guard sweep, possible deep no, half guard it, position. No, no and Mitchell uses it to uh, get back to a full guard. And he's sitting already at an angle. So Hewitt needs to be careful of his right arm. It's an underhook position there. If that left leg goes over the head, we could see Hewitt in an armbar position, and he, and he sees the threat. Stay there, stay there. Yeah, Hewitt looks to be bleeding from the nose slightly. Good for a second there, looked like he was going to try and invert on the legs. And he's now underneath side control, and I wonder if we're going to see another attempt for the buggy choke. There it is. His corner is calling. He's going for the buggy, so he already knows what it is. Onto the legs here now. Angus, push his legs away from you. Push his legs away from you. Looking for that heel hook, maybe. Push his legs away, Angus. Inside heel hook attempt here. Oh, big hammer fist. And it's Mitchell cut here now as well. Looks like he is. Mitchell really isn't able to get a good bite on this leg. He's not in a terrible position for it. This is better. I mean, they're going to be super slippery. Hewitt knee trying line to clear that knee and does. Yep. And it's actually uh, it's actually good who's in a bit of a knee separator. You can't really see it on the screen there, but if you look at the right leg of uh, of Hewitt, you can see the thigh is giving downward pressure. This is a very nasty position to be in underneath here. And that cuts just across the bridge of the nose on Mitchell Good. This is a horrible position and. Good is sort of lucky that his legs are so long here. If you had shorter legs in this position, the leverage would be even worse and there'd be more pressure on here. And to see someone being a, a, a calf, you know, a, a knee separator, essentially a calf splice, and locked off in half guard is kind of nuts. I'd expect to see him creating some space and beca because this leg is completely destroyed. You know, he, he can't utilize it. This is what I was expecting. Create enough space that he can remove the leg again. He's not trying to remove the leg. I think he's still thinking about about attacking a hill hook. He's trying to tie up a guillotine here, but with that leg still on the, uh, the, the calf splice, he's going far side uh, straight ankle lock. It's going to be very hard to get any leverage because his legs are still tied up, and now the leg is free. Tried to switch to the toe hold there, but Hewitt out. Guillotine attempt. Got to be High careful the neck here. Oh, this looks like he might be in. No, he's allowed the pass from here. And it's Hewitt who's been very dominant in the uh, grappling in the second round. As we've seen, I mean, he, he gets so tired, but he's still able to just perform very, very well through that fatigue. He's transitioning now. It looked like he was trying to go into mount position and is happy to settle inside of half guard where he can really drop some elbows, some big shots, hammer fists. Hewitt dropping bombs here to end this second round. 
And it's another very good five minutes yep. for the Silverbacks man. And uh, Hewitt sitting on the floor here, <laughs> looking absolutely exhausted. Ready, ready. Let's go. And I really think Good needs to try and get a top position in the grappling here. And so far, he's not really. I mean, we saw the sweep early in the fight, and I think we saw one in that second round. He wasn't able to maintain it. But if Good can get to a top position, he has a much better chance of finding the back. But off of his back here with someone who's so aware of the grappling exchanges as Hewitt, I just don't think he's going to find that. Hewitt linking those hands. Is he going to try and turn himself off the fence? Use this position. Body lock in there, able to turn Mitchell just as the referee was warning for an activity and drags we, him to the mat. You see Q in this position a lot in this fight and a lot in all of his fights. He, he's physically very, very strong in this position and he'll muscle guys to the mat just like this. Good needs to be very careful about giving his back completely. He's lost the wizard with that right arm. He fights back for it, finds himself on his back again here and it's not where he wants to be. Great job there to change direction from Angus Hewitt. Expect to see that Mitchell left hand looking to get an underhook. Clear instruction from referee Rich Mitchell there about toes through the fence. You can push off with the flat of your foot and your heel, but you cannot put your toes through. He's, got, he's found himself, uh, I mean, Hewitt hasn't taken advantage, but Good is bringing his arm into a head and arm position. He needs to be very careful. If, if Hewitt wants to, start putting a little bit of pressure there, and it looks like he's thinking about it. You know, uh, Good could find himself in a bit of a, a bit of a risky position in terms of being uh, arm triangled. You've got to use this position. Don't just hold, come and use your position here. And another warning from the referee. Again, I think it's a little bit more activity with that left arm taking far side underhook. And you were just smashing away at the side of Mitchell Good's head. There's the underhook there. And honestly, I think these guys are so sweaty at this point that you can't really get the friction to utilize that underhook. When you stop putting a little bit of pressure, it just slides up the body to the arms it's so difficult I mean I've spoken about in other fights at the beginning of the fight when it's so much easier to grapple when they're dry well this is a great example of when it's much much harder to grapple when you're very very sweaty into side control into mount beautiful stuff from the silverbacks man and if Angus Hewitt, deci uh, Hewitt decides to posture up here and strike this is going to be a nasty position to be in head and arm now possible back take attempt I think he's going to lock off here I think he's going to start to apply pressure. Might try and free the foot. Might try and sink into position here. Mitchell does a good job of keeping this arm high. He's going to try and pull it round to the other side of the head. Nicely done. Threat of the head and arm choke is no longer there. But there's one very big threat that's still there. And that is Angus Hewitt in the mount position. If he starts to start, if he decides to start striking from here. Big elbow from Hewitt. Calls from the calling corner. for elbows. Mitchell gives up the back here, and Hewitt goes for it. Arms under the neck. It's locked off here. This is a great position. The hand is a, a little bit loose here. It's shallow. He's gone palm to palm. Now this is a nicer position. He's got to bring that arm in a little bit further through. And he decides to disengage, and that was a smart job there. And one more attempt on the buggy choke. He's locked off. The hands are connected. There's a minute left on the clock, and the buggy choke is fully locked off. Oh, he's trying to book away. This would be one of the craziest comes from behind victories with the buggy choke. Mitchell Good putting everything he has into this. Could it be? Could it be? 45 seconds. The head of Hewitt going red. Oh, this is incredible. And this is what they've done. Oh, my, oh, my goodness. Don't blame it on the sunshine. Don't blame it on the moonlight. Blame it on the buggy. Come from behind victories 
I have ever seen in MMA. Where he was 100% looking like he was going like to end it. He almost did. The angle was slightly off with the hips. It was slightly off with the hand. He's able to take top position, and this transition to side control from the from, from the back take was a smart move. The difference was he was so tired at that point. We saw him defend very early those initial two buggy chokes. But this third one, he allows him to lock in. And the, the slow burn on this, I mean, I think it took about 20 or 30 seconds for the finish. I cannot believe it. What an insane submission. And everyone at cage side absolutely flabbergasted at what's going on here. As we take another look. Mitchell squeezing for all he's worth. There's the submission. Incredible scenes here in London. Ladies and gentlemen, your referee, Mr. Rich Mitchell, calls a stop to this contest after four minutes and 24 seconds of round number three, declaring your winner by a way of buggy choke in the blue corner, Mitchell! good with what I believe is the first buggy choke in Cage Warriors history. Phenomenal performance from this young man on his promotional debut. Coming to share some words with my broadcast colleague Dan Strauss. Dan, that was crazy. I don't think I've ever screamed as much <laughs> in a commentary position.